In this video, let's learn about the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct is the largest lymphatic vessel that drains the lymph from most of the body into the bloodstream. The lymph in the thoracic duct is milky white in appearance because it contains a product of fat digestion that is called as chyle from the intestine. In this thoracic duct, appears beaded due to the presence of numerous valves in its lumen so it has numerous valves and it is milky white in color due to the presence of chyle the thoracic duct drains the lymph from all parts of the body except the right side of the head and neck the right side of the chest wall and the right lung and right side of the heart the right surface of the liver and the right upper limb so this violet color is the right upper quadrant that is drained by the right lymphatic duct. Now let's talk about the extent of the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct extends to the upper end of the cisternae chyli on the posterior abdominal wall at the lower border of T12 vertebrae. So this is the cisternae chyli and this is the T12 vertebrae. It extends from the cisternae chyli and the T12 vertebrae to the junction in between left internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein at the root of the neck. So this is the left subclavian and this is the left internal jugular vein. You can see the beaded lymphatic duct here. So this is the extent of the thoracic duct. The measurements of the thoracic duct are the length that is 45 centimeters or 18 inch and the width of the lumen is 5 mm this lumen may narrow sometimes in the middle now let's learn about the formation course and the termination of the thoracic duct so as we know the extent duct begins in the abdomen at the lower border of t12 vertebrae as the continuation of the cisterna chyli. This cisterna chyli lies in front of the body of L1 and L2 vertebrae and it enters the thorax through the aortic opening of the diaphragm and it ascends in the posterior mediastinum to the right side of the midline on the front of the vertebral bodies. And on reaching the T5 vertebrae, it crosses the vertebrae from right side to the left side and it enters the superior mediastinum. So remember, it ascends from the posterior mediastinum and it enters from right side to the left side into the superior mediastinum and it runs along the left border of the esophagus and then it reaches the root of the neck. So this is the esophagus. It passes along the left border of the esophagus and at the root of the neck it arches laterally at the level of C7 vertebrae and in front of the vertebral artery and vertebral vein that is together called as the vertebral system and the left cervical sympathetic trunk and behind to the carotid system the carotid system means the left common carotid artery the left internal jugular vein and the left vagus nerve and the summit of this arch lies 3 to 4 cm above the clavicle and finally, the duct descends in front of the first part of the left subclavian artery and finally terminates by opening into the junction of the left subclavian vein in the left jugular vein. So, it opens here. In between the junction of left internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein. So, this is the opening of the thoracic duct. So, remember the thoracic duct begin in the abdomen and it courses through the thorax and terminates into the neck abdomen to thorax and to neck this is the course of the thoracic duct and remember at the t5 level it crosses the midline from the right side to the left side and enters the superior mediastinum from the posterior mediastinum and it passes to the left border of the esophagus now let's talk about the relations of the thoracic duct the first relation we'll talk about is at the aortic orifice of the diaphragm. So anteriorly, the median arcuate ligament of the diaphragm is at the relation of the thoracic duct. 
the posterior relation is the T12 vertebrae and to the right side the azygous vein so you can see the azygous vein in the diagram this is the azygous vein and to the left side the aorta in this diagram this is the descending thoracic aorta so these are the relations of the thoracic duct at the aortic orifice of the diaphragm that is at the T12 vertebrae level now let's see the relation of the thoracic duct at the posterior mediastinum so in the posterior mediastinum the anterior relation is the diaphragm the lower part of the descending aorta and the esophagus so these are the anterior relations at the posterior mediastinum and the posterior relations is the vertebral column the anterior longitudinal ligaments the terminal parts of the axillary hemiazygous vein and the hemiazygous vein as you can see it in this diagram this is the axillary hemiazygous vein and this is the hemiazygous vein and the right posterior intercostal arteries are also in the posterior relation in the posterior mediastinum and in the posterior mediastinum the right side relation of the thoracic duct is the azygous vein and the left relation is the descending thoracic aorta and now this thoracic duct enters the superior mediastinum now let's learn the relation of the thoracic duct in the superior mediastinum in the superior mediastinum the anterior relations are the arch of aorta and the commencement of the left subclavian artery and the posterior relation is the vertebral column to the right side is the edge of the esophagus and towards the left side is the left lung and pleura and then this thoracic duct enters the root of the neck so let's learn the relations of the thoracic duct at the root of the neck so this diagram is the relation of the thoracic duct at the root of the neck this is the thoracic duct and the anterior relations of the thoracic duct is the carotid sheet that contain the left common carotid artery the left internal jugular vein and the left vagus nerve and the posterior relation of the thoracic duct is the vertebral artery so this is the vertebral artery the scalenus anterior muscle that is the medial border of the scalenus anterior the phrenic nerve the thyrocervical trunk and the thyrocervical trunk with its branches that is the suprascapular transverse cervical and the inferior thyroid artery this is the trachea the esophagus now coming to the tributaries of the thoracic duct this is the diagram for the tributaries this is the cisterna chile descending thoracic lymph trunk the thoracic duct these are the ascending lumbar lymph trunks these are the iliac lymph trunks so in the abdomen the efferents from the lower six intercostal lymph nodes on the both sides drain into the thoracic duct those are from the both side and in the thorax a pair of the ascending lymph trunks which drain lymph from the upper lumbar lymph nodes and a pair of the descending lymph trunks which drain lymph from the posterior intercostal lymph nodes of the upper six spaces and the lymph vessels from the posterior mediastinal lymph <coughs> so in the thorax a pair of ascending lymph trunk that drains lymph from the upper lumbar lymph nodes those are the para aortic lymph nodes and a pair of descending lymph trunks that drains lymph from the posterior intercostal lymph nodes of the upper six space and the lymph vessels from the posterior mediastinum lymph nodes in the tributaries in the neck region this is the left bronchomediastinal lymph trunk the left subclavian lymph trunk the left jugular lymph trunk and similarly this is the right bronchomediastinal trunk the right subclavian trunk and the right jugular trunk so this is the thoracic duct which enters the neck region in the tributaries of the thoracic duct in the neck region is the left jugular lymph trunk that drains lymph from the neck the left subclavian lymph trunk that drains lymph from the left upper limb and the left bronchomediastinal trunk 
and this is the right lymphatic duct that drains lymph from the right upper quadrant of the body. Now let's learn about the clinical correlation. The first one is the injury to the thoracic duct. As the thoracic duct is thin walled and it appears to be colorless, during the surgery it can be damaged sometimes at the level of the posterior mediastinum. And the laceration of the thoracic duct during the surgery leads to the leakage of the chyle into the pleural cavity and producing a clinical condition that is called as the chylothorax that is the chyle in the thorax and sometimes the cervical part of the thoracic duct may be damaged due to the block dissection of the neck it should be ligated immediately and if the injury is not detected at the time of the operation it may cause an unpleasant chylus fistula and leakage of the lymph and therefore the immediate ligation of the duct is required to stop the leakage. And the second point is the obstruction of the thoracic duct. Sometimes in the filarial infection, the thoracic duct is obstructed by the microfilarial parasites. Those are the Ucrera bank of T and it leads to the widespread effects such as the chylothorax and the chyloperitoneum and the chylurea. So in the infection of the Ucrera bank of T, it causes chylothorax, chyloperitoneum, that is the chyle in the peritoneum and the chylurea. Sometimes the accumulation of the chyle in the tunica vaginalis, so the chyle in the tunica vaginalis is called as the chylocele. This is an important point to remember. And now coming to the final part, that is the development of the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct develops in three stages. Stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3. So this is the first stage of the development. In this stage, the network of the lymph is seen in the front of the thoracic part of the vertebral column. So you can see the network of the lymph channels here. And in the second stage of the development, the two longitudinal lymph channels are seen. You can see it here. In this network of lymph channels, that is one on the left side and another on the right side, they have a number of cross communications like this. And in the stage 3 of the development, the cross communications appear opposite to the T5 vertebrae, the right longitudinal channel below to this cross communication and the left longitudinal channel about to this cross communication persists and this form the thoracic duct. All the other parts in the stage 2 disappears and the final thoracic duct is appeared. So guys this is all about the thoracic duct. If you like my video do subscribe to my channel and do look at some of my recent videos and playlists.